G'day all, Matt here. Just wanted to give you a, I guess a starting point on how you might go about understanding the uni game. We'll play the uni game first so we can have a look at what I'm talking about. Uh, I think I've got it compiled so I can just run it. And the application chooser starts up with the sound. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but I can. And then I jump into uni game. So I really would love to get rid of this um, flashing back and forth, but it's there. So here's the Unigame. Uh, the controls are Z w for action, WSA and D for movement. And those are things we might experiment with uh, to help us get a kind of hook into the code. I can get through this text just so I can show you WSA and D happening. And I want to show you some of the things that are here. I mean, we got a teacher, we were talking to Dev, we're about to walk out and bump into Karen. So there's just features of the game that we might look think to look for. So here now I can get out of that place which is a PC lab and here I am in the outside there's a there's an IBIS. And if I bump into the IBIS I'm in a battle now so battles are in the game. And there's a U-bar as well over on the right. Okie dokie. So just some features of the game to look out for because we're about to look at the source code and what we want to do is build a top level map, a high level map of the source code just for ourselves. But I thought you might need some Tips getting started. The first thing to notice is that in the sources for the mini console, I've got a bunch of directories, data, lib, logs, and source. And as we get to be more experienced programmers, we might get used to what these normally mean, but we always got to double check. Lib is normally libraries, and yes, this is full of Java libraries that help the application run. Actually, I think a lot of those aren't necessary, but they're still there. Logs is almost certainly logs, and there's something Git's keeping track of. Data. Oh, look, data's got all these pictures and stuff, PNGs and, and some folders for other parts, other things that I've seen in the game. Maybe this is just storing the um, you know, sprites and images and things I need. And sources is where we normally find our source code. So I can see there's four directories in here. There's a class file as well. Now, class files we generally ignore. This one's actually left over. It doesn't belong in the repository. It's only here on this computer because I was mucking around doing some experiments. So there's four folders, which is breaking down the, the console into smaller parts again. So the, there's the whole console, then there's the examples. I wonder what they are. There's the MQ app. I wonder what that is. There's student work. I wonder what that is. Unigame. We've got an idea what that is. And if I have a look, actually, oh, examples looks like uh, some programs, they're not actually on the interface anymore. They were early examples we did. Uh, student work are the games that are directly undergraduate student work, but the uni game is a special piece of student work, so we put it in its own folder. And MQ app is, oh, it's the application chooser and some other things that sound serious. These are kind of the overall things that other parts of the program will need and the startup. But uni game is what we're interested in. And the first thing we notice when we open this file looking for interesting things is there's just class files everywhere. And they've got very strange names. Now class files can generally be ignored, they are what gets created by Java when you compile it. Uh, I thought it might be useful to show you how to hide those class files so that they're not getting in your way. If you bring up the settings, uh, it's best to use the GUI interface for settings, and I actually just want workspace settings, so I'll go straight to there. There's a special place called the file exclusion section, and I can add a pattern in there. If I add .class files in there, I think, I haven't written the pattern right, Let's copy the way the other ones were written. So that's anything slash class. Um, I think I want anything slash anything such a yeah, now they're being hidden. So I needed to know that special glob syntax, but there it is. You go know it now. And look, all the class files disappeared, and I can just see the, the Java files. Much better. And I can see concepts from the game here in my high level map. I can see attacks have two files related to them. Battles you know, have about six files related to them. The PC lab where I started the game is there. And if I jump into the PC lab, maybe I don't understand any of this code yet, but I can already pull out features like the fact that there's a teacher, and there's a Karen, and there's a dev. And this is what I put together to start to build that top level understanding. And later on I go back and do the kind of uh, prodding and poking at specific things. But I wanted to explain to you the general folder out structure and the fact that you want to hide the class files, but also that you're just guessing at what these things mean at the start. 
that's it for now.